How's everybody doing today? This is Ryan here at LAPA coming at you today with a live podcast and we're going to talk about intervals today. So um, let's kind of go ahead and dive in here and um, just get this up for you. And uh, first of all, let's talk about, well, what are intervals? Okay. Intervals are um, basically the building blocks of music. Okay. So a lot of times what happens when we're playing, uh, we're looking at notes on a page, right? And we're trying to work out the technical aspects of that, you know, making sure that we're singing the correct notes or playing the correct notes. And um, sometimes it's good, though, to stop and think, well, why does all of this work? You know, how are, you know, how are these notes put together? What's the logic behind it? Um, how is music created? And um, basically, the building blocks of music are intervals. And that's what we're going to talk about now. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the smallest intervals that we have in music. And we're going to talk about, well, what is an interval first, okay? An interval is simply the distance between one note and another note, okay? So um, first, let's get this on the page here. Intervals, okay. And here's our little treble clef. Not too bad there. And so, for example, if we do, um, for example, a C, this is middle C on the piano. Pull up our piano here so everybody can see. Middle C, if you don't have a piano or you're not familiar with the piano, um, you've probably come across one before. Middle C is just basically, if you look at the letters on the piano, it's the C around the letters. Look for the two black keys here, and then it's to the left of the two black keys, okay? And that is the note we have drawn right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna draw the next note here, which is a D, okay? So we have C, D, okay? The distance from C to D is two, right? There, if you look again at the keyboard, from C to D, they're two keys apart, okay? So we would call this an interval of a second, okay? Now, if I did, you can get a little more specific than that though. So we have two different kinds of seconds. We have what's called a major second and a minor second, okay? The minor second is the first one we'll talk about because that's the smallest interval that we have uh, in Western music. So. If I go from a C, again on this piano here, and I go to the very next key, which is a D flat, or you can call it a C sharp as well, that would be what we call a minor second, okay? Also known as a half step. You've probably maybe heard that before in your, in your lessons. But um, I'm trying to write this here in my my app is failing me <laughs> so we're gonna reboot that app and we're gonna plug that in let's see there we go okay so C to D flat is what we call a minor second and you can write that as a little m and a 2 okay then when we go from a C to a D that would be what we call a major second so big M, two, okay? And we mentioned the minor second is also called a half step. And then the major second, I don't know if my big M is good enough there. Let me see if I can repair that. There we go. And um, so C to D is a whole step or major second. Okay, and um, so again, we look at the piano. When we go for a major second, as we showed you before, you're going from C to D, but you're skipping this middle black key, okay? And uh, so it's a little further away, okay? Um, and this is how you create a minor second or a major second on any um, key, 
So that's another advantage to getting away from just reading notes and thinking about the math and the logic behind all this, because once you do that, you can create things in any key. You're not limited to notes on a page. So if I want to play a major second from D, I would go D, skip the very next key, and then go to E. Okay. Um, if I wanted to create a minor second from D, I would go from D to E flat here. Okay. Um, what would happen if I want to do a minor second from B? It'd be B to C. What about this? Why isn't it a black key though? So there's something, uh, you know, common mistake that people make. Sometimes we think, well, a flat has to be a black key or a minor second has to be, you know, from a white key to a black key. Well, it doesn't actually. So you can go from an E to an F, that's a minor second, or a half step, or B to C is also a minor second or a half step. If I wanted a whole step or a major second from B, I follow the same process. I'm going to go from B, skip the very next key, and go here. Okay, same with E. E, skip the very next key, and go to F sharp. Okay. So when you say sharp or flat, it's just sharp is usually the very next key to the right. Flat is the very next key to the left. So if I want to play an E flat, there it is. If I want to play an F sharp, there it is, because F is right here. Okay. So um, that's kind of a basic overview of minor second and major second, right? Or half step and whole step. And once you know those two intervals, you can do quite a lot. Um, because, you know, major scales are all built in whole steps and half steps, uh, minor scales as well. And a lot of songs, of course, you know, have these, these types of melodies in them that are scalar in nature. So um, that's a big chunk. And you should definitely know that and be able to hear it. So let's talk about hearing it and identifying these um, in music. One of the apps that I like to use is called Tenuto. Okay, I'm on a desktop right now, but um, if you look in the App Store and you look up Tenuto, it's um, T-E-N-U-T-O, you will find this. So we're going to exit that for right now. And um, so, yeah, you can also access this at musictheory.net. Uh, which is the desktop version of all this. But um, what I like about this is you can let the computer generate intervals and you can see if you can tell the difference between a major second and a minor second. Okay, So if I look here I have an E to an F. Okay, You know what I'm going to even take out key signatures. It's good to keep it real simple at first. So you don't have to worry about any of that. Let's see. Oop. Doesn't look like it wants to do that. Come on. Well, <laughs> I guess it's not one to do that. But anyway, maybe it'll work another time. Um, so we have two different notes now. We have C to D. So all we need to do is we need to look on our keyboard and we need to say, okay, here's C, here's D, right? So we're skipping that key in the middle. So that means we have a major second, okay? And then um, down here, if we know these ledger line notes, which is also something a good, a good to do, be sure you're practicing your flashcards, right? Um, you'll see we have, well, this is a middle C is on this line, then we go down to B, then we go down to A. So we have an A and a B here. And so that means, once again, we're skipping this key in the middle, so we have a major second, right? And you can keep doing this. You can also work on hearing them. So... Let's see, if we go to this here, and you can, um, let's see if this works this time. You can turn off all the other intervals that maybe you're not familiar with yet. And just focus on, yeah, that worked, okay? So another um, 
thing to do is it, it just kind of plays intervals. And if you want to hear it again, you click on this speaker icon. So that brings up another question. Well, how do you learn to hear intervals? You know, maybe you don't look at the notes, but you want to know how can I know what that is just by listening to it? That's a great question. Um, usually, what a lot of people do, myself included, we memorize songs, um, you know, that are associated with those particular intervals. So, um, if you go to this website here, um, I've found that it, it has quite a few different songs, you know, depending on ones that you're familiar with, that will... Um, list songs that are made up of these intervals, right? So the most popular one for the minor second is the Jaws theme, all right? If you're not familiar with Jaws, well, it's the, the big shark. <laughs> it's coming. So if you listen to the very first part, you have a minor second interval there. Right there, that's definitely a minor second. So... And if you look on the keyboard here, we have E to F, okay? No keys in between, minor second, all right? So, uh, the other one that we have is the major second. So the most popular one for that is Happy Birthday, which I think we all know, right? So if I play Happy Birthday on the piano, hard to play I'm clicking a mouse here <laughs> so notice I can do this these major seconds oops my mouse got, my mouse got stuck there um, but I can click any note if I want to start here I follow the same process right I'm gonna create a major second from F sharp by going here skip the very next key and then go to the next key so so that would be a good little exercise to do at home. Can you play Happy Birthday on the piano, the first two notes of Happy Birthday on the piano in any key? Sure you can. You just start here. We're going to skip the very next key. Go to the next key. Right? Very easy. So that's our major second. Okay, so... Uh, to review, minor second, we're thinking, is that sounding like the Jaws theme? Uh, major second, is that sounding like Happy Birthday? Or any number of other songs that we have on this page. You know, Furlies, if it's a descending, we all know that one, right? Um, that's a descending minor second. Um, let's see what do we have for descending over here. Oh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, Three Blind Mice. For major second so a lot of different songs this is a really good resource so go ahead and bookmark that but let's play the uh the little speaker again. okay so you're asking yourself well does that sound like happy birthday or does that sound like a shark you know waiting to attack usually the minor second and minor intervals in general especially minor second minor third are going to sound a little darker um, and the majors, you know, some people associate those with the happier, brighter sound. Um, that's something else you can think of. Okay, so I'm thinking that's going to sound like happy birthday, right? And you can always test it on the piano, so I'll click that. Okay, and if, it, if you get it right, it's green. If you get it wrong, it's red. <laughs> so... Okay, what do we think that one would be? If you can match the pitches too, that always helps to compare it. Um, but you don't have to. So that'd be a minor second. Okay, and you kind of get the idea. Okay, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is um, a good first step in ear training, understanding intervals, because like I said, once you get the hang of this, you can really do a lot. Um, and so we'll try to do this on a semi-regular basis. Um, next time we'll talk about maybe the third intervals, maybe the fourth intervals. 
Okay, so good luck in your lessons and hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Bye.